We just highlighted some of these deals that you signed last quarter. Just really a wide variety of companies. Give us a sense as you look ahead to the second quarter, where are you seeing the biggest demand? What sectors? Uh, I'd say public sector is huge. State and local government, uh, manufacturing, aerospace, telecommunication, consumer packaged goods. Uh, it's, it's really across the board. Uh, we're now in construction materials at Wholesome in Europe. That's a, a, just a huge transaction going on there. So this is all about digital transformation. It's about applying AI to optimize business processes. It's about energy efficiency, ESG, decarbonization. It's, um, it's, so Tom, it's, it's about everything. It's about every sector and every industry? It's huge. It's huge. So you, you mentioned some of the uh, public sector. It sounds like you're talking about the federal government. So your federal government revenues actually doubled uh, last quarter, 100 percent increase. What's driving that? Are there certain sectors? Is that defense? Is that some other area of the federal government? Uh, it's, you know, it's primarily defense and intelligence. So it's about, you know, predictive maintenance for aircraft and other assets, uh, contested logistics, supply chain optimization, uh, very sophisticated intelligence applications associated with signals coming from satellites and what have you. So it's across the board as the uh, as the defense and intelligence community kind of uh, goes, they're going through a digital transformation to take advantage of these technologies for the kind of kill chain of the future. That would be hypersonic swarms, uh, uh, autonomous uh, subsurface vehicles, uh, cyber warfare, what have you. And we're kind of very much at the heart of all of that. Okay. Um, one other area that we've been looking at here on the show is enterprise software. We actually saw enterprise software take a bit of a slump. When we look at enterprise AI and enterprise uh, software, how do those two work together? Can they work together? Or is enterprise, enterprise AI, is that a replacement for enterprise software? No, it, 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 that's a great question. So we have the, the enter, enterprise application software business. It's about a $600 billion business globally, ERP, CRM, supply chain, manufacturing, HR, what have you. Now, these are primarily technology stacks that were built in the 20th century. And uh, while they're very sophisticated, they do not incorporate AI. And what these applications do is they allow you, you to port with 2020 hindsight your cash you know, what machines broke, what your customer churn was. Now, by making these applications predictive with the C3 AI stack, we're not, we're not replacing them, but we're allowing them to predict what customers are going to leave so that we can save them. We, were allowed to, we're, we can predict where the supply chain is going to break down so we can fix it before it breaks. We can predict what our demand is so we can make the right amount of materials to meet customer demand. We can predict that we get into large and complex infrastructures like the grid or oil and gas infrastructures are in a base can, case, you know, best case scenario it sounds like. process. So it sounds like best case scenario complimentary. Uh, one other thing I want to ask you about, uh, we highlighted your stocks rise since your last earnings. One data point in this earnings uh, generally would be bad for a company like yours. Uh, current remaining performance obligation actually down 36 percent year over year. If you have so much demand, why is that metric down? That's generally a, a, a metric that gives you insight into demand coming up in the future. Great question. Uh, we, we changed our pricing model a couple of years ago from a subscription-based pricing model where people would make very large commitments up front to a consumption-based pricing model where they make virtually no commitment and just pay as they go. The result is increasing, dramatically increasing revenue growth as we're seeing in the results. But you know, ipso facto, by definition, RPO will, will, will diminish down to a very small number over time.